Hey guys, Cody Schwabe here, and today in this video, I just want to talk to you about shipping international and my experience with it. Um, I haven't been painting very long, only a few months, and I actually just shipped my first, uh, just sold and shipped my first uh, international painting about, uh, not last week, well, no, yeah. So, today is Sunday, so not last week, but the week before, okay? Um, and I want to just talk to you about the experience that I had doing that, um, some of the things I learned in doing it to maybe pass along to someone who uh, is looking to sell art internationally um, and just some of the things I learned some of the like the experience and going through that and how I actually did it um, to to accomplish that goal okay so first off let's talk about the prices okay I'm actually gonna sit down um, there's a lot of I actually have some packing supplies behind me that I'm gonna show you so let's talk about the prices okay um, the painting that I sold was two foot by three foot. So here in the U.S., I don't know where you're watching this video, but you know, it was uh, 24 inches by 36 inches. So two feet by three feet. Um, I, so the prices for that, when I went to, I, I checked three different places for pricing. Okay. So because I've never shipped internationally, I wasn't sure what the pricing was going to be. And I sold that painting for over $200. Okay. So just keep that in mind. I sold it for about $225 for a two by three. Now, um, when I, on my website, as an incentive to sell because I'm not very well known, I included free shipping uh, because I wasn't used to selling internationally. So I didn't know what those fees were. So I was like, you know what? All right, here's what I'll do. I'll sell paintings, I'll sell my paintings and I'll include shipping for free so that I can at least learn the process. Okay, so that's why I did it. I'm not suggesting you ship for free. I'm only telling you that I did it to get the experience to do it. I was like, okay, if I have to eat the fees, that's fine, even though I'm, I'll tell you why I was worried about it in a minute. But I was like, okay, I'll just eat the fees and, um, you know, that way I can learn the steps. Like I wanted to go through the process, so this was the perfect opportunity. Okay, so let's get down to prices. So this, again, this was a two by three painting um, and it was three quarters of an inch thick. So it was 0.8 uh, inches thick. Now, this one right here is actually, that one is also three quarters of an inch. And then the, this one behind me, this big one, and then this one over here are also are um, one and a half. So one and a half is kind of the standard and that's kind of the, probably the direction I'll go from here on out. But, you know, when I was learning to paint and, you know, the painting that I sold was one of my earlier gloss enamel paintings called Metropolis. And that's one of my Pollock style paintings. It's actually the first Pollock style painting I did. So I'm actually really, I'm really surprised that it's sold, but I'm really proud of it. So anyway, getting into pricing. All right. So the painting weighed about, I want to say three pounds, I think was, it was like three to four pounds total with paint and everything on it. Okay. And then again, it was two by three with 0.8 inches. So I actually didn't end up shipping the painting. My wife actually shipped it out, but I went through the process before it actually got shipped. So I took that painting and the first place I went to was UPS. And I told them my painting and, uh, you know, I called them and I looked up the pricing for a painting that size. And to, uh, sorry, the painting I sold was to someone in Singapore. So from the U.S. to Singapore, okay? So, well, I put in my dimensions for UPS and I asked them for a quote. That quote came out to be $700. And I was like, well, I was definitely not expecting that, and I should have charged a lot more for shipping if that was the case. You know, I was charging, you know, $700 for shipping. Whoa. So, that was obviously a shock to me when I only made two something off the painting. I was like, whoa, dude. I, I started just seeing red. So, I was like, okay, you know what? Let's try FedEx. So, I went to FedEx, and um, they were trying to give me a box that was like, 10 inches bigger on each side and they told me that this was the best box they had and it, the painting was going to be suspended and you know perfectly protected and all this other jazz and like I think the weight came out almost to 12 pounds or something I think and they uh they quoted me 550 and I was like dude 550 dollars is insane I was like how can you guys justify these prices but then the lady at FedEx, she was she was really nice and she was trying to help. And she told me, she's like, you know, you're paying for convenience. So when you sell it, you know, via FedEx or UPS, you know, 
generally that thing is going to reach that destination in about three days, you know, some like three to five. So I was like, okay, I, I guess that makes sense. Um, you know, because like, you know, they're, you're paying for that convenience. All right. So I, by this time I was almost defeated. Okay. So I had talked to UPS, talked to FedEx and they were telling me, you know, at least over $500. And I was like, it was bothering me because I don't have a lot of money to sink into it. You know, I have to pull from my own personal money to pay that. And I was like, okay, the last resort I have is USPS and I'm sure we can get it cheaper, but I wasn't sure like what the shipping policies were. I wasn't sure what the weight limits were, what the size limits were. Um, if they would even ship to Singapore from the U S like from USPS, the United States postal service. And so I was worried about that. And I was like, you know what? They're probably going to be cheaper if they ship it, but it's probably still going to be hundreds. Okay. So we packaged the painting ourselves and we took it to USPS and we shipped it out through USPS. So overall that painting ended up with, with shipping insurance ended up being less than a hundred dollars to ship. Okay, so I think it came out to like 96, 97, something, something like that. So just, just under a hundred dollars. And I think the painting weighed eight pounds after everything. I think it was under eight pounds actually. So, you know, we shipped it ourselves. We shipped it through the local post service and it still reached that destination in about five days, not five business days, five days. I shipped that painting on a Friday. And they had it in their house, I think, by Tuesday or Wednesday of the next week. So within, I think it was like five or six days. Not even, yeah, not even six days. So, and that was over a weekend too. And they got that painting, uh, I think it was by Tuesday or Wednesday. So my point is, is like, I was worried about it because I've never shipped internationally. And I'm seeing these prices and I'm like, dude, to ship a painting, it's so expensive. It, it can't be done, but it did. So, and it worked out. They, they sent me an email. Thank you. We received it. You know, thank you so much. So it worked out. Okay. So the pricing of my painting to ship a two foot by three foot came out to just under a hundred dollars with shipping insurance of the value of the item. Okay. And that was my experience. So the reason I'm telling you that is so you kind of have a baseline. So I haven't shipped anything else internationally at this point. So I couldn't give you prices on other ones. Now, a few other things that I learned um, from the USPS. First off is that if, you know, if you're going to ship that way, which is the most economical, and it worked out for me, and I was so happy, I was so excited, I still profited. I don't want to say it spent me like it spent half because there was other taxes and fees that went into selling the painting and I had to buy the supplies to ship it and all this other stuff. So I didn't make, you know, I didn't just net, you know, a hundred something dollars. It was actually less than that, but still I made a profit after all that was said and done. So anyway, um, so some of the things I learned one that the, most of the cost in shipping up an item comes from the weight not the size. So apparently the weight of the item is the biggest part of it, not the actual, not the, uh, the dimensions of the box. Now, the other thing I did learn was that I think the dimensions, at least for here in Arizona, I don't know if this applies to anywhere else in the U S for the world, for whatever. Um, for me, I think the dimensions, I want to say the max dimensions were 48 by 79, which is huge because I actually want to sell more, um, rectangular paintings, like uh, long rectangular. So I, I want to get more into, um, you know, like three by five or three by six, because I, I love the way that those fill a space behind a couch. So anyway, um, so that's just something to keep in mind. So for me, I don't know if this is the same for you, but the max dimensions for a box was 40, uh, 48 by 79. So um, so those are just some of the things I learned in shipping this painting and they got the painting just fine. And, um, you know, it worked out for me. So that is, that was my experience. I was super stressed uh, like that. I wasn't going to be able to ship it. I was going to have to refund them and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be professional, wanted to get that painting out to them. Okay. So that is the pricing part of it. So just, those are, those were the prices for me. Obviously that I can't guarantee those will be that in the future or for your item, but just as an idea you know, shipping via UPS was seven times the price and uh, FedEx was about five times. So yeah, but again, you pay for convenience, even though they still got it really fast. Okay. So let's talk about how we ship this bad boy. Now, there's two main methods that you can ship a painting that I've seen and that I've now done. And, um, 
I don't know if either way is right or wrong. Um, you can kind of do whatever you you can, mostly based on the materials available, because they're almost they're almost the same thing, but I guess I guess they're not. So about half of the steps are the same. So let's talk about um, how we shipped it. So let me actually grab a painting real quick. I've got a few up on this. Uh, I actually like store a bunch of paintings up on this short wall that I have in my house. So let's talk about the painting itself, okay? So this is actually a piece that I'm gonna be sending out to someone. So there's two ways to do this, okay? So first off, you can take this painting that you have, and sorry, um, you can take this painting that you have and you can put it, you can wrap it with foam. So you can take this painting and you can cut foam to match the, the size of the painting and put foam on both sides of the painting and then you can tape that down so that it's almost like a sandwich of that paint. Like, you know, so you have foam. Now, I would not use this foam. The only, This is actually just regular styrofoam. I would not use regular styrofoam. It will tear apart, okay? The only reason I'm showing you that is to get an idea of foam um, because I don't have any more. And this is all I had available for the video. So it's not styrofoam. It's a foam that you can get from like a home improvement store that's denser, that doesn't just like crumble like styrofoam does. But it's thick like this because this foam right here is like, uh, I think it's an inch thick. So it's super thick, but it's really lightweight and it's gonna protect the sides of the painting. So you put, you cut the, the foam out to the shape of the painting, and then you put foam on both sides, and then you tape that out. And you, you cut the foam a little bit bigger than the painting itself, um, or you can wrap the painting in like, um, like uh, what is it, glassonine paper or something like that. Um, you know, you can wrap it in something like that, or you can use, um, you know, actual professional grade saran wrap, and then you can put the plastic around it and tape it to that. Um, and then once you've done that, then you're gonna take some cardboard, so like some spare cardboard, or you can cut a box, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that sandwich that you made, and then put, you're going to put the painting, so here, so you would put this painting down, and then say that this was the cardboard, you would actually score the sides of the cardboard, and you'd cut it big enough that you could wrap this around this and make it into like, almost like you were folding a blanket around it, right? So you would fold all the sides and then you'd tape that closed. So it's nice and tight, so it's secure. So that box is like a little carriage, like a, like, like, like a suit or something, I don't know, a suit of armor around that painting. And then once you have that, then you're gonna take your box, right? And you're going to, uh, you're gonna take that cardboard sandwich and you're gonna wrap it with bubble wrap. You can use big wrap, you can use small bubble wrap, depends on the size of the painting. Um, and if you're trying to fill the box, like if you have some space in the box, I, I recommend using that big bubble wrap because it's going to fill up the space. It's super lightweight, obviously. And then, um, and then you're just going to keep wrapping the painting. So once you have this painting, um, you know, either in the sandwich um, or what you can do is instead of doing the foam, you can just wrap it in like, like uh, I got this, it's professional grade saran wrap or like pallet, pallet wrap, I think is what it's called. You can use pallet wrap, right? So you wrap that around the painting, you start on the back, you, you know, you just hold it down and then you wrap it real tight. You don't want it to be loose, you don't want it to, I mean, you don't want it to crush the painting, but you want it to be firm, right? So that it's not wrinkled and pushing into the, the painting itself. Um, so you wrap it in, in the wrap, and then you either put the foam on it, or if you don't have the foam, you can't get it, then just do the cardboard and make that little suit of armor, make it tight, you know, cut all the, the edges so that when you fold all the sides, like they line up and it makes it, you know, very um, flat, very flat. Um, and then once you have it wrapped either in the foam with the cardboard or just the cardboard, from that point, it, the rest is just bubble wrap, just tons of bubble wrap um, wrapped around that painting. Um, you can tape it, you know, to the cardboard and then you just wrap it over and over and over again and just wrap it, you know, both directions to fill the space in the box so that when you push it into that box, it's not going to move around. Okay. So, and then something that I had to kind of figure out was how, how was I going to ship this painting? Right. How am I going, like, what box am I going to use? Am I going to make a box? Am I going to, you know, try to find a big box and cut it down? You know, I could not find any boxes to fit the painting, like, per, like exactly. Right. Cause that's, 
you almost have to have them made or you, you have to like go on specific websites. And I was like, I don't have the time for that because I, I promised I'd ship them out in five days. So I only have five days to get a box, to get all the supplies, to get this bad boy shipped. They bought it on a Saturday and my, my policy on my site is five business days. So I shipped it out on Friday. So like I was within my five days. I wanted to be a man of my word. I wanted to be honest. So what I ended up using was one of these bad boys. Okay, so if you look, this is uh, 36 by four inches deep and then 27 inches long. Perfect dimensions, right? Because it was 36 inches long, the box is only one inch bigger. It was 24 inches wide, this box is 27. And the only kicker was that it was four inches thick, right? Well, that's what she's, no, I'm not gonna go there. But, so it was four inches wide, um, so that was the only challenge, right? Because with the painting wrapped in the cardboard and everything, it still only came out to a little over an inch. So I had about three inches I had to fill. So here's what I did. Um, basically what I did was, I, I, like I said, I wrapped it in bubble wrap. So I wrapped it in small bubble wrap first to kind of protect the painting, and I wrapped that inward so that the bubbles were facing that. And then what I did was I took big bubble wrap, the, the bigger ones, and wrapped it the other way so that the bubbles were on the outside. And then um, I just wrapped it in a lot of big bubble wrap to, to really make it uh, fill that space of, of the box, okay? Um, so, you know, basically I wrapped it long way. Like I wrapped the, the painting like this, um, one like along that way with with the big bubble wrap and then I just kept going over it uh, over the sides so that when it sat inside this box you know there's a gap here but when I set the painting in there um, because because I had wrapped it with so much bubble wrap like when I set it in there it was actually really snug um, and then lastly all I did was to to make sure to kind of like give it a little bit extra protection um, I actually used a big um, I actually used a box bigger than this to actually um, use the cardboard to wrap it, you know? And so what I did was I just cut cardboard pieces that were about, that were about the size of the box and just put those in the sides of the box. So it basically like inside the box, there was like a sheet of cardboard and then the bubble wrapped painting and then another sheet of cardboard um, just to give it more protection. And then lastly, there was a little bit of a gap on the top. So I actually just cut strips of cardboard that were this wide, like this wide. I just set them, um, I just cut long strips and just set them on top to kind of fill the space so the painting wouldn't move up and down. Um, and then that was it. And then I shipped it and they got it and they said everything was cool. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's, that's, that was my experience shipping my first international painting. Uh, you know, it may not be for everyone, but it was super exciting for me, and it was also a learning curve. And I read a lot of different articles about it, and uh, you know what? You can read everything, but like you just have to do what works for you. Um, so if you if you really need more help on shipping a painting, just look it up on Google and YouTube. You can find ways to ship paintings, but that's how I did it, and it seemed to work out. Um, so yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys found this video super informative. If you did, please like, rate, share, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff, right? And um, you know what? Share it with someone else who you know is an artist or someone like that may benefit from this video because... Again, I'm not a professional, but I have shipped overseas now, so that's pretty cool. And uh, hopefully this information will benefit someone else. I'll catch you guys in another video. Have a great day.